Hi, it's Larry Herb, Xbox's Major Nelson. Welcome to the official Xbox podcast. It is uh, happening now, and uh, it's been a few weeks since we've all been together, and I think, let me see if I hit this, if I hit this button, will it actually happen? I don't know. One, two, <laughs> three. Ah! We've got uh, Rebecca over here. We've got Jeff over here. Uh, it's oh, uh, great to have you guys there. back. Rebecca, it's good to have you back. Larry, you should really know what that button does by now. Well, it's, it's, it's yeah. It's, I, I never know what the button's going to do because I don't know. I don't know who's going to show up. I don't know when. I don't know where. It's, it's, <gasps> There's we're the little, lower thirds. It's a, it's a little bit of the seat of the pants operation here sometimes. <laughs> so, but nothing but professionalism. But we're back, Rebecca, okay. you've been gone I, for a couple of weeks. It's good to have you back. Where have you been? Thanks. Yeah, I missed your uh, <laughs> seat of your pants button pushing. Um, I I've been off spending some time with family. I went back to the West Coast, um, had my mom's birthday, and then my grandma actually turned a hundred, and so we celebrated with wow. a lot of karaoke and a lot of eating. Um, Wait a minute, <laughs> you tell me your grandmother did karaoke? Oh yeah, oh what, yeah. What's, um, her, so what's Korean, her go-to song? Uh, she has like four really old Korean folk songs, and she just sings them over and over and over again. But the hilarious thing is, she has the stamina of someone even younger than me. So she was actually up singing until like midnight, <laughs> but it's just the same songs over and over again, but it's, it's fun though. Yeah. She Good loves to eat. She, she loves to mix, sing. I see where I get it from. Don't stop believing in there or something like that. Just, you know, the, unfortunately the not. No. What, well, English that, is a little bit of a barrier. <laughs> well, that brings me to my next question. What is your go-to karaoke song? Oh, um, well, I really love uh, "Bring Me to Life" by Evanescence. It's mm -hmm. classic. <laughs> and then, <laughs> wow, that's, that's then, a high difficulty level song. Thank you. Um, and then, if I've if I've had a couple drinks, I'll usually bust out like the the like screaming voice at the end too. Just teenage angst coming back to life. Bring me um, <laughs> bringing you back. Yeah. To what life. about you? Yes. Yes. Bringing me back to life. Oh, how did I miss the opportunity yeah. for a pun there? You really, um, you really did. <laughs> I don't know. What about you guys? Go to karaoke songs. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Uh, I've done one of one of my best is Paradise by the Dashboard Lights. I I believe that's Meatloaf. Could not tell you how it goes. It is. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, what about you, Jeff? Let's let's uh, let's bring you something a little into the nineties. I'm a I'm a terrible singer. So well, I am too. Wherever I just, any I song know. where I know everyone's going to jump in. Oh, yeah. No. So you. So, but I'll try to pick songs where I know other people are going to jump in and make a lot of noise to sort of like mask that as much as possible. So like Sweet Caroline, which, um, yeah, exactly. People do the bump, bump, bump. And at that point, once you get past the first verse, the, the whole thing's on autopilot. Um, same thing for- Especially if you're at Fenway uh, Park. <laughs> yeah. And they, and they do that at Arsenal matches in the rare event that they win. Uh, right. that they, they, will, they will play that as well. Uh, don't hear that that too much but um and then living on a prayer by by bon jovi that's another one you're not going to sing that chorus by yourself yeah. like everyone's going to yeah. be doing that you know and i have a at story that point, about that song. put the mic out here i have a story about that song <laughs> i'd be disappointed if you didn't larry no i just one of my <laughs> my, one of my favorite memories of that song is when i went to when i you know 10 years ago when i did that uh week in iraq for the uh, rock band competition, that was the song that everybody was singing on the on the on the on the on Camp Liberty, and every every we it was it was a talent competition it was rock band obviously, and I think like eighty percent of the entries were singing that. So I just remember being in the middle of the desert in Iraq in this tent singing <laughs> singing that song with these amazing service men and women just belting it out and it was it was a rather magical magical evening i'll tell you that i was expecting this ended Lovely. with like at four in the morning i was woken up by a call from mr john bon jovi well, calling from New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, that's, i will say that's this. where i thought this was going no i it was it was gonna get him bit, on the show right was, let's I'll, get john bon jovi on the show do you want john on the show john this is a call out to you and all of my friends <laughs> in jersey we need to get you on the show um yes. does he still have the hair I, we, I, we need a bigger box you know <laughs> I will I will make accommodations for John to come on the show. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so 
I've had a fun couple of weeks. My voice might be a little bit shot from all the singing, but I don't know. What about you guys? What have you been up to? What have you been playing? Oh boy. We, well, you know, you didn't tell us what you were, were you just playing the, the get to the East coast and West coast and East coast game? <laughs> or did you, did you actually get any video games? Flight there? simulator it's called Larry. Yeah. that's I, right. Flight <laughs> No, I, I did bring my switch. Um, and I mostly just played animal crossing. I actually started playing animal crossing a little bit late into the like pandemic. So I haven't played during the summer. So now I'm like seeing all the different like summer items and yeah. So I played, played some animal crossing, but I, I, did, I wasn't near an Xbox I need or to anything. get back so. into that. I've got it on my switch as well. I just, I just, I don't even, I don't even think I've built out my Island. It's embarrassing. I mean, it's like, it's like a bachelor. Me island. Too. It's just, just gross. <laughs> There's weeds There's everywhere pizza online. <laughs> pizza boxes. There's pizza boxes and the sofa's dirty and I don't know what's going on. So it's like, I gotta, I gotta get back into that. Jeff, what are you, what are you playing? Uh, well, in case this doesn't, uh, you know, make it clear, I, I wanted to play other things this week Oh, that, and I just couldn't <laughs> play anything but Hades. It just kept pulling me back in. This is a game actually you mentioned switch and I bought it for, so it came out, it was the game of the year, uh, on PC and switch last year. And over Christmas, uh, we were on vacation and I was like, Oh, let me find a game to play. And I, and I bought it and it was good, but my hands are reasonably big and it's a very intense game. And on a Joy-Con, which I was playing on, you don't have the pro maybe uh, I, I was traveling, Larry. And uh, the amount of times I've docked my Switch, I can count on one withered hand. So I uh, mostly was playing that way. And I was like, this is really cool. Um, but I just wasn't able to finish it. And it, certainly not during the couple of days I was on vacation. And then when I found out it was coming out on Xbox, I was like, well, let me play it on a big screen. And it hooked me in a way that it, it didn't previously. And it's right. just, it is a stellar game. It's an amazing game. For those of you who don't know, it's a roguelite. Uh, and would those explain, types of by games- By the way, would you explain what that means? Because it feels like we're hearing more and more of that lately. Sure. Now, if you think back to like how games were when you were growing up, like if you're playing like Super Mario Brothers or something, like you, you didn't get to save after World 3.2 and then pick it back up and save scum at all. Try and beat the dragon again. You, when you're out, Elias, you were done. Now imagine you had one life. That 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 is sort of like a rogue type of game, but like these rogue lights or lo- rogue likes, uh, I've heard them both be used. Yeah. You generally, besides the knowledge of what is to come, you generally get to take just a little bit more. Like you, you earn just a little bit, so you're slightly stronger. Uh, you know that next time around. Now, sometimes these games would frustrate me. I mean, there's a lot of like very well known versions of that, like uh, Spelunky and um, uh, oh my god, uh, uh, Dead Cells was another Spelunky. really big one. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and. I, for the most part, I've tried a lot of these games and I've never beaten one of these games. Because right, uh, right. at some point I get to the point where I'm like, I make the best run I can do and I'm like, I can't do it. And then I get kicked back to the beginning and I'm done. That is not happening with Hades. And one of the reason I think that is, is when you get, when you die, you go back to the house of Hades uh, and there's a lot of really interesting characters. And they talk to you in, and they say different things. They're not just normal, like boring NPCs. And it progresses the story forward. And people, bosses that you have beat are now back there. And like, it's almost like they're on their work shift when you're fighting them. And then they're back at the bar sort of drinking and generally not very happy with you afterwards. And there's all kinds of different mechanics. There's times where I'm having a really good run and I'm like, I actually can't wait to die because I'm going to get to go back and give this thing to this person and advance the story more. And I think that's the genius of Hades. The voice acting is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and and I, I just can't get enough of it. I got to, last night, I got to what I think is the end boss of the game. Oh. Did pretty well. Didn't quite do it. I And I'm, I'm progressing further. Um, but there's new weapons to unlock. I mean, it's on Game Pass. Give it a try. And I would say give it at least four or five runs. Because what it starts out with changes dramatically. I'm not using that first weapon. It didn't work for me. I have new mechanics and I've got a lot more health and a lot of other things like that. And the other thing I would just say is if these games tend to be too tough for you, there's something called a God mode in it. Now, when you think of God mode, you're like invincible and it takes all the fun out. That's not how this one works. It gives you basically 20% more defense. And every time you die, it adds another 2%. So I think I'm up to, so after I ran like 10 runs and I sort of got, I'm like, 
let me speed this up a little bit. So, cause I have other stuff to play. I flipped on the God mode and it's just like a little bit of a boost. It's, it's, it's a Godling mm-hmm. mode. Um, but it's enough that cool. it's just a little less frustrating and, and it doesn't, and that's it. Nothing else changes. The game is still very challenging. You're yep. still are doing all the mechanics. You're, it's, it's not like you're just sleepwalking through it. Um, it's just a little bit more forgiving. And I thank them for putting that in the game. In fact, I'd like to thank them personally, and I'm going to get to do that today, aren't I? You are. You're going to be interviewing uh, Greg Greg Casavon, who's the who's basically the creator of Hades, and he's been on the show before with some of his previous shows. So J- Jeff's going to give go into much more detail with Greg later on with Hades. We've got some other interviews lined up as well today. I've, we're going to talk about uh, Gamescom. Have you ever been to Germany, Rebecca? Yeah, I got to go to Gamescom in 2019. Uh, 2019 was a good year for cons and festivals and everything. And oh my year, gosh, yeah. if what I wouldn't give for a nice cold Kolsch and some pretzels and spetzel and sausages and currywurst. Anyway, and, yeah. And don't forget Gamescom the most important games- part. <laughs> Barren gummy bears. <laughs> <laughs> those are pretty good. Yeah, I, I brought some of those back home too. Um, but Gamescom was crazy though. I mean, if for anyone who's ever gone, I think it's the largest gaming convention yeah. in the world. Um, way, way more massive than E3. Like I, I took a car to get from one hall to the other for my meetings. Yeah. Um, and there were just so many people and they were giving out, I remember they gave out um, as souvenirs, they gave out these like cardboard boxes that you could use, turn into chairs for you to sit on while you were waiting in line. Yeah, you guys I remember waiting that. in line for things? That's yeah. crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, well, you'll hear about, yeah, so you're going to hear about that from, um, from Maxi, who's our, uh, her German, uh, a uh, coworker on the ground there. So we're going to talk about FanFest and how you can get involved. It actually opens, you know, depending upon when you're listening to this, if you're listening to the show or watching on a Friday, available now. If you're listening to it after Monday, don't bother signing up because the signups are over. <laughs> so you've got a few days there. And then uh, 12 minutes. I'm going to talk to the developer of 12 minutes. You've Now you know this game, right, Rebecca? Right, Jeff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this yeah it just really came good. out this week. The reviews are good, uh, really good, actually. And so very much looking forward to it. And some really big star power in that game, isn't there, Larry? Yeah, there's a, in fact, I think, I think about the Willem, Dave, Willem Dave, Dafoe? Dave, Willem Dafoe, Daisy yeah. Ridley. Yeah. Um, uh, James, James McAvoy. McAvoy. James McAvoy is in it. And this is the one, if you remember a few years ago, where, and you'll see the video uh, when I do the interview, where it's it's top down. You have to, you're in a 12 minute time loop. Uh, so you're going to, we'll, we'll hear about that. So we've got, got some pretty good, good interviews this week, as we always do. want to thank everybody for, uh, for, for jumping in there. Jeff, thank you for doing the Hades interview. Rebecca, I got a, got some interviews lined up I, for you I, coming I, in the future. So it's, uh, we got some good stuff going on. So it's, uh, what Jeff, other than Hades, what have you been playing? You know, you know what you and I need to play? Actually, all of us are going to play because I know Rebecca, we haven't had a chance to do this is we are going to play uh, Aliens Fireteam. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Because it's, it's built- I think it's out next week. Yeah, it's out next week. Yeah. I'm working on an interview for that. I, I have a code for you, Rebecca. You can be, there's, it's it's you, it's co-op up to up to you plus two more. So total of the fire team Perfect. is three people. And here's here's our here's our Aliens Fire Team right here, right here, right here with these people. So did, did you Which like- Which one the- of us is going to be killed horribly? Uh, I'm assuming all of us, but- I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's it's are, are, you, us. I'm are you an aliens fan, Rebecca? Yeah, I didn't play I don't think I played any of the games, but I really enjoy the movies and okay. basically anything else Ridley Scott does. Yeah, it's uh the and the guns, the the weapons feel like that pulse rifle in the in aliens, the second one. The burr, burr, it feels really good. There's some other nice. stuff there. So we'll 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 have some fun doing that. But that's uh, that's kind of what we're playing, and Jeff, we've we've got we got a bunch of news. We'll talk about the other side, including uh, and Rebecca, you were not here for it last week uh, because uh, because as discussed earlier, you were traveling. But you know, things are going to get serious when I bust. <laughs> Ooh, so we it's have, time! We I don't know what you've got. You had a controller last week, so what what could it be? What's like what else is he pulling up? Yeah. It's gonna require both hands this time. So we'll uh we'll do that. Do do why don't we go and do roll into the interviews? Uh Rebecca, why don't you set us up for the interviews? We'll go into those and then we'll talk uh, we'll talk some news on the other side. How's that sound? Yeah. All right, so let's kick things off with Hades 12 minutes and fan fest. Just about 10 years ago, Xbox 360 players were enjoying the summer of arcade with some Pretty legendary games. Now stop me if you remember any of these ones. Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet, that was great. From Dust, I really got into that one. 
Fruit Ninja Connect, a lot of, a lot of this going on, but another game that was going on, that went on to be named the best Xbox Live arcade game of 2011, Supergiant's first game, Bastion. Greg Kasavin wrote Bastion, and he also wrote 2020's game of the year, Hades, which is now available on Xbox at and Xbox Game Pass, and he joins us now to talk all about it. Greg, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, very happy to have you here. I've in the intro, which you did not see, um, I've just been talking effusively about about <laughs> uh, Bas- uh, about Bastion, about Hades. Bastion was great too. Really love that okay. one. But uh, you know, I, I want to just welcome you back to Xbox. You know, we we haven't seen a super giant game on the Xbox platform since since Bastion all those years ago. I, it did appear also, I believe, on Xbox One. Um, but you recently brought Hades to Xbox players in in the biggest way possible through Xbox Game Pass. So how has the reception been so far? Uh, it's it's been amazing. I mean, one of the questions we had was, you know, how how is this going to go? Um, because we we did have the the kind of initial 1.0 launch in the fall of last year, um, and we we knew you know more players are out there, but but uh, the the question of how many you know will will people still be interested in this game? Uh, the the answer was a lot of people, and and they're definitely still interested. I mean, it, it's it's such it's been such a surreal. Uh, kind of just a surreal time for us on the team um, because of the the level of uh, interest and love for this game has been beyond um, anything that we could have imagined. And now seeing it embraced uh, by by Xbox players feels really, really good because we've, we've certainly heard from Xbox players uh, over the years. Um, th- we have we have some, you know, very, very loyal to our studio. They've been playing since Bastion. So they, they've been uh, particularly pleased and it's it, it's been really great to hear from them. Yeah, uh, as you had mentioned, 1.0 was was last year. I myself picked up Hades on Switch over the holidays. And it was funny because I was bouncing back and forth between Hades and Immortals Phoenix Rising, an awesome mm. game. But let me tell you, a lot of whiplash over the, the different ways the Greek gods were were represented in, in, the, in those two games. Um, and so we've seen just throughout pop culture, all the way through the Homeric epics, you probably had to read in 10th grade, a lot of different representations of... Zeus and Athena and all the all these other characters. Um, how did you settle on like what I would consider a very charismatic uh, version or depiction of this mythology? Yeah, so so thank you for that. Um, we you know we asked ourselves that question going into this game, like what business do we even have adapting Greek myth because it has been done well and in so many different ways so many times before. But we did feel like we had a point of view on them that we hadn't seen done too much. Which is, uh, you know, it, and from my perspective, rooted in in the classics. It is rooted in the kind of Homeric tradition, which which really focuses on how they're this big dysfunctional family. So we almost imagine them at like a Thanksgiving dinner and like is slotting into these different types of family archetypes, like you know the the weirdo at the corner where nobody really wants to know, you know, nobody wants to know too much about him. That's like Ares or someone like that. Dionysus is the guy who's probably you know on his sixth uh, glass of wine already when, uh, while the night is still young. You know, Athena's barely trying to hold everything together while, while you know, the conversations take, uh, take a ridiculous twists and turns. So knowing that these gods kind of bicker and have their very human flaws, that was what really uh, drew us to them and wanting to tell this kind of family story with them as the uh, primary characters. So a, a lot of the lore of the the Hellenic uh, gods and then the demigods and all the other hangers on and people of various uh, different abilities that they're kind of like hinted at a lot of the mythology, like as part of the conversations without necessarily being spelled out. These are people that know each other. They're not delivering massive amounts of, of sort of backstory or, you know, it, it, throughout the game. I have to imagine a ton of research, you know, specifically probably by you and your team as the script was coming together. So, um, you know, everyone knows how like Achilles was brought down, you know, an arrow to the to below the knee and and how Prometheus was punished by Zeus for discovering fire. There's got to be a lot of a weird stuff that maybe not everybody knows. Yes. You know, they didn't it wasn't in the Iliad or the Odyssey or something like that. So I just curious, like if anything has jumped out at you as you were doing that research and you're like, we have to work this into the game somehow. Oh, yeah. There, I mean, it's there's so much right. Like uh, part of what was 
so fascinating about the subject matter is that it's it's filled with contradictions. And y- you you allude to you know Achilles and the Achilles heel and so on, but uh, people forget that that's not even in the Iliad, which is like the 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 big story of um, uh, of Achilles and the Trojan War. You know those kind of details came uh, came later on. So just knowing that these stories um, are filled with different contradictions and different versions, like that in and of itself was something that we wanted to kind of dig into and figure out how that could sort of all be true within one universe. But probably the biggest thing that comes to mind from, from what you asked is, is Zagreus himself. Um, Zagreus, you know, players sometimes uh, think that he's a character that we made up, but we absolutely uh, did not. He came out of our research into the subject matter where, you know, we're, we're researching the underworld specifically and like, oh, we, you know, everybody kind of knows Hades as the god of the dead. And it's like, wait a minute there's some references to him having kids. Like I've never heard of Hades having children. Who's this Zagreus guy? Why does nobody know that Hades had a son? Um, and that idea on its own was so compelling to us that we wanted to build a whole whole game around it um, and, and basically figure out what could have happened, you know, between uh, Hades and his son. Why, why is this guy so, so unknown? And um, how does he connect to the myths that are known about Hades? Um, that, that discovery, you know, yeah, kind of moved the whole game forward. I was very much in that boat. I just assumed let's have a convenient person and you get, that gets to be your eyes through this like tour of mythology. And, and like, I think a lot of people might be doing is, is playing games like this, playing, uh, you know, uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising and like wanting to dig deeper into it and then finding out, wait, there, there is a Zagreus. And and I think that was just really awesome to hear that. So yeah, yeah, and he's oh, even uh, sorry. Even with him, there's there's these strange, uh, you know, the the primary versions of him kind of connect him to Dionysus in in these very strange tales. So like our our game, you know, kind of uh, pokes at some of these different uh, ideas and how they might you know coexist as part of the same character. And the part where he's he's very little known, uh, it, it ended up being great for us in a way because he is kind of a blank slate as far as a, a, anybody is concerned, right? And there's there's so much is known about Zeus and Athena and and all them that like it's it's it was great for us to be able to focus on a character whose story was kind of like a yet to be explored, I guess. So I'd love to talk about the voice acting. Uh, excellent voice acting and performances have uh, been a pillar, I would say, of super giant games like ever since the ever present narrator in in Bastion that was such a differentiator, I think, in in the way that game hits you. The mythology in Hades really comes to life through these like sort of haughty, kind of condescending performances from the gods and like the more somber tones that you hear out of your fellow underworld compatriots. Um, and of course, there's Zagreus, who's kind of like instantly likable, uh, which is good because you're you're spending a lot of time <laughs> with him. Um, and I, I have to imagine the voice talent really had to enjoy recording these lines, especially Dionysus, who you mentioned. I feel like he's putting out some like super David Bowie vibes out there. So like, what, what was it like hearing your your writing come to life through these these performances? Uh, I mean, it was, we loved working with our voice cast. It, it was a scary big step for us because we've never done a fully voiced game with a big cast of characters like this. Uh, we've always worked with uh, Logan Cunningham, who's the narrator in Bastion, uh, he's been in all of our games. He's the voice of Hades, and what is it? Five other characters uh, in this in this game. He's he's Achilles. Uh, he's the storyteller. He's Charon. He's Poseidon. So it's it, Logan is amazingly talented. So I've had the pleasure of hearing uh, you know words I've I've written brought to life by by uh, by this amazing actor in the past, and I I would joke that you know I could write the worst trash and. Uh, Logan is going to make it sound amazing. Uh, so the challenge for us was to find other actors who are kind of like who who we could believe could exist in the same world as an actor of Logan's caliber. Um, and we were really happy with with who we found and had a ton of fun uh, recording. It was like it was one of those things. Since we developed the game in early access, we were just always chipping away at it. There was always a recording deadline around the corner, just going little by little. And we only realized how much there was like literally at the end of development where people are like, man, there's a lot of voice acting in this game. We're like, really? Because we're just trying to make sure there was enough. And it seems as though we got there. Um, And um, I I also have to shout out uh, Darren Korb, our audio director, who did all the voice recording and voice direction and is also the voice of Zagreus and Skelly. 
So he um, and it, so the same guy who writes all the music in the game is also the voice actor for Zagreus. He is just an amazingly talented guy. Um, and we didn't know he had that kind of performance in him, even though we've been working with him for more than 10 years until, until this project. And you can't get two voices more different than Zagreus and yeah. Skelly, which is, uh, it's like a cabbie and, uh, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I, I can't let you off the hook, Greg, because, um, <laughs> I believe you're the voice, you know where this is going. The voice of I Hypnos, do. the embodiment of sleep who, uh, kind of like, Whenever you're having a bad day, the last thing you want is that first person that's going to be like, bad day, huh? Case of the Mondays. Yeah. And that, that's you in the game. Can you, can you hit us with some Hypnos here? Uh, well, I, I don't know. Um, Hypnos is definitely Case of the Mondays embodied. Um, yeah, I, think that's, I think that's a good call about what, what he's all about. It was a really fun change of pace for me. Um, I'm not you know, a professional in that regard, like, like someone like uh, Logan. Um, and the fact that we uh, it can kind of have those little opportunities on team has been, has just been a ton of fun for me. It was just like always a, a refreshing change of pace to go into hypnos mode. Cause uh, he, he's just in his own universe that is very, very different from mine. And we, w there is so much to do, uh, working on a video game that I, I think Darren and Logan, you know, they felt similarly getting to switch on into, you know, some of these characters, uh, whose voices we provide, it's it's just always a fun uh, change of pace. Now, if you're listening to this interview and you're like, why aren't they talking about the actual like gameplay or anything like that? And I think that's what differentiates Hades from a lot of the other roguelike games out there. There are times where I've almost been like excited to die because I yeah. get to then go I acquired an item or whatever it might be. And I want to go back and I want to talk to the different characters. But uh, let's talk about roguelikes in general, you know, they tend to be tough. And in many right. cases, if you're having trouble, the only option is to get good. Now, Hades is tough right. also, but there are some options in there that I, I will say personally, most roguelikes, I get into it and then I have like an amazing run and I don't do it. And it's so dispiriting to be sent back. A lot of times I walk away from it, but the Hades includes a God mode, which despite sounding like that, I think maybe it fits in more with the theme of the game than actually making you invincible. It sort of makes you progressively stronger the mm -hmm. worse you do in the game. Um, but there's also a mind-boggling array of unlockables, different equipable weapons, these boons, which you can upgrade in, in different ways, thousands if not millions of potential builds. What do you suggest as someone for a, a player who might... Who, loves the look of the game, loves the sound of the game, loves the, the idea of the game, might be having some trouble. I some coworkers of mine that would love to be better at this game. Oh yeah. I, I think, I think definitely check out God mode. Um, if, if you are struggling, um, you know, one of those like challenges relative, right? What's, what's really difficult for one person may be a total cakewalk for another. And the thing about roguelikes and their reputation for being brutally difficult is you know, I think I think that's less a feature of the genre and more of like a necessity for them to get you to be able to start over because what's so great about roguelikes is that they're different every time you play. So it's something we thought a lot about while working on this game because we, we we want players to experience, you know, the 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 part where it's like different every single time. But if you get so frustrated after dying and, and you you don't come back to the game, then you're not getting to the heart of what makes roguelikes so great. So that, you know, even things like our decision to have such a, a focus on the story flows from that kind of thought process. And, and God Mode is there. Um, you know, we want players to use it for any reason whatsoever. Um, but one, one of those reasons could be that you're just, you know, you're just not having it. You're not feeling it's, it's, it's too much for you. You're starting to have that impulse of like, man, I, I'm interested in this game. I want to learn more about the characters, but I just can't get far enough as much as I would like. And like, I think God mode is perfect for players like that. Since the game has um, a, a significant story component, it's really important uh, for us that players who become invested in the world and the characters, that they could see the story through to the end and not have one of those moments. I'm, I'm sure we've all had as game players of like, just when you're on the edge of your seat, you're dying to know what happens next in the story. You hit that boss and it's like a roadblock. You can't get through them. And you're just restarting the checkpoint over and over and getting super fed up. So we didn't want that kind of moment uh, to happen in this game. And that's part of the 
uh, part of why the story, you know, just kind of moves forward, whether, uh, you know, through every death, that was kind of, uh, that was the thing that we um, set out to do, uh, have it feel like one continuous story. Very cool. I, I'd highly recommend, even if you've been turned off by roguelikes in the past, to uh, to give this one a go. And it's on Xbox Game Pass, so it's very easy to try it, see if it's for you. And I'd recommend you give it four or five runs to really get a feel for for what the game's about. And it still continues to change dramatically, even into your 10th, 20th run. You're, you're discovering new yeah. things and things you don't expect. Uh, so, Greg, you have an interesting story yourself. Uh, when I Before I got into the industry, um, I used to read you on, on GameSpot. Uh, you yeah. know, read your reviews and uh, sometimes agree and sometimes disagree, but remember, <laughs> remember you very fondly in that era. Uh, and then you've joined Supergiant, and for the last 10 years, you've been uh, putting out highly regarded, uh, well received games. And those are two jobs that I think a lot of people out there would love to know, you know, how, wait, how do I do that? And how, how do I get on that journey? Um, and I know you, you got started in the industry very young. So, what advice do you have for someone out there? Is like I would love to do any of those things. Yeah, it's um, you know it, it, things have changed a lot. So so I think I think uh, what what worked for me um, probably would I think different steps would have to be taken today, right? Um, like when when I got started writing about games, we had literal you know printed fanzines that we would send in the mail to people. So uh, positively archaic stuff, um, and I kind of got into it as. Uh, gaming websites were were first starting kind of in the in the later 90s um and and game development you know is something that i wanted to do like i i had my heart set on uh making games since i was uh 8 years old um but only got my start in when i was i think 29 so if i kind of knew uh, how to efficiently get in uh i would have you, you know i would have gotten there sooner i of course really fell in love with writing about games and that's why i I did that for more than 10 years. I think like I think starting to do the the work itself is one of the one of the pieces of advice I hear that I that I happen to agree with. It's kind of like you know th there's there can be that impulse to kind of wait for the opportunity for someone to say, you know, you are now a game developer, now start doing this stuff. It's like there there's nothing mm -hmm. to stop you from doing it right now, um, if you have uh, the time and the internet connection, um, you know you have these tools like uh, the the Unreal Engine and Unity that are like industry grade powerful tools that are free to, to download and and you could start learning. Um, and th those are only a couple of ways, right? You could write interactive fiction and twine, like just just figuring out what you personally really want to do and what your kind of talents are. Um, can be so important, and then, and then you're starting to do the work for real, whether it's professional or not. Um, and you might meet people, um, you know, through through other communities and start working with them. Like Supergiant is is the result of just a, a few of us working together at at Electronic Arts. Like we didn't, you know, I work with a couple of guys I, I met there. I think on day one, but we didn't imagine any of this. Right, life can take straight strange uh, turns. Uh, with uh, with that sort of thing, but we we loved uh, the work, I guess, um, and and that part is really really important to like enjoy the the journey and not be so fixated on the on the dest uh, on the destination itself as much as possible. Just to love love the process of trying to create something, trying to learn how to do it. Um, yeah, I, I I would just encourage anyone who thinks they have an interest in making games to just give it a shot. Just, just try it, and because you you will never regret trying it. I think. Yeah, that's great advice. Don't don't wait to be hired at EA or yeah. at Supergiant or, or Xbox to start making it. You you can start making games right now, and it's you've never had more tools available than than right. than now uh, as opposed to what you had you know ten or twenty years ago. Greg, thank you so much for joining us. And Wikipedia, don't let me down. Happy birthday. Uh, just about. It, on, on Saturday. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. Play Hades. It's available. It's awesome. You definitely want to find out why it got named 2020 Game of the Year. Uh, August is one of my favorite times of the year because usually we go to Gamescom in Germany and joining me from uh, from Germany is Maxi Graf, who kind of runs, uh, runs some of our Xbox marketing over there in Germany. Maxi, great to see you. 
So great to see you. And it's sad that we don't see us in person as we always do it during Gamescom. I do. Gamescom is one of my favorite events because it's just, it's such an, an incredible show where the fans come in thousands. I mean, hundreds of thousands of fans come in and it is, you know, the, the Xbox stand is always bustling. Um, and it's, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's just, it's, we're going to miss it this year, but we're, I'm having you on because we've got some great stuff coming up. We have the stream, <laughs> which is uh, going to be happening. We've already talked about the, the big stream that's happening, but we're doing a fan fest event. And I wanted to talk to you about that. So tell us a little bit about what fans can expect and, and cause they can sign up right now, right? That's right. So today from Friday 20th, just go to xbox.com slash fanfest and you have the, f- the chance to register um, to join the sessions that both of us will be hosting, actually. So Larry, yep. you will be hosting sessions, I will be hosting sessions. And um, just be have in mind if you sign up, it's going to be on for three days. So it stops on the 23rd, which yeah. is uh, the Monday, I believe, since it starts today now from Friday. Yep. And we're not going to be telling you who's going to joining us because um, that's going to be a surprise and a secret. Yep. But I mean, we can tell you um, if you're there. You can ask questions. You will be on a big team's call with other people. You can enjoy the others uh, in the community. And uh, that's a great chance to actually talk to one of the great Xbox people or developers. Yeah, so I'm excited because like I said, like you said, you and I are going to be hosting some some of this. Uh, you'll be hosting some. I'll be hosting a couple. Uh, but we'll have special guests. I don't even know who they are yet. But, but the most important thing is depending upon when you're watching or listening to this, between uh, Friday, which is when this show is going live, between Friday the 20th of August, and it stops on the 23rd, which is Monday. So if you're listening or watching between then, go sign up at xbox.com forward slash fan fest. And again, you don't have to be in Germany. It's not like Gamescom. You don't have to be in Europe. You Anybody can attend from around the world, right, Maxi? That's right. So timing wise, um, either you will be getting up maybe a little bit more earlier in the morning or um, later in the evening when you are at German time. So everybody has a chance to really join and it will be in English as well. Uh, So please join. Yeah, because unfortunately, my 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 uh, my German is leaves a little bit to be desired. I'll just say that <laughs> your 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 English is I can fantastic. Translate. Yeah, thank you. It's you know it's it's such a great uh, you know Gamescom every year is such so great to go to the beautiful city of Cologne and it's it's to get to see you, Maxi, and and more importantly, the thousands of fans and Xbox over the years has done amazing things. I mean, I remember doing a fan fest. It wasn't called fan fest back then, uh, Maxi, when when it was in Leipzig. That's how long I've been going, which is oh many, many God. years ago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so That's amazing. Do yeah. you remember the last fan fest as well? Well, the one on that the, we the, did? the one on it, the vessel on the boat. <laughs> yes. Thousand, thousand yeah. fans on one boat. <laughs> yeah, on the boat going up and down the crazy. Rhine River there, which is which is kind of <laughs> exactly. the, 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 the 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 Cologne Messe is on one side of the of the Rhine, and of course the city of Cologne is on the other. Uh, and we would go, we went up and down and Graham was there, Graham Boyd, good old AC Bongos and the thousands of fans. It was just su- such a wonderful, beautiful evening. And we're going to miss that. Hopefully next year, we keep, we said this last year, hopefully next year we can come back, but it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, but it, but it, because we can't do it, we're going to bring to you virtually. So we're, you're going to, we lose some things that in person, but we gain some things because you don't actually have to go to Germany to join us. Right. That's true. Everybody can participate. And um, I'm really excited. And I want to know, like, from which region who got, who's coming, because I know usually on FanFest, we meet people from the Netherlands, from the Nordics, from the UK, like everybody is really coming. And it's truly an international event. Yeah, and that's one thing that I, I always like to tell people, especially here in the United States, who are used to going to E3. That's the beautiful part about about Gamescom and, and FanFest is that, you know, the, the the people live and die by the railways over there. And being able to hop on a railway and get right into the center of Cologne or, or right, it drops you off right in front of the Messe. In fact, this this background here we have, it drops you off right in front here. Uh, so, so that's why I'm always, I'm surprised, but not surprised at the, 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 the reach mm-hmm. that, the, that, that Gamescom has, because people are coming in, as you said, from all of the different countries around the area, around the EU and beyond, right? Yeah. And that's why, um, I hope that a lot of international people join as well. And 
just want to say again, even if you're from Germany and you don't really know the English uh, language that well, I'm going to support you guys. I'm going to translate. So each of you has a chance to ask a question. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have a lot of fun. So just go to xbox.com forward slash FanFest before Monday, 23rd August. Uh, sign up there. It's open to everybody. You don't have to do anything. You just have to sign up. And uh, we would hopefully Maxi or I will see you in one of our sessions, right? That's true. And so um, just remember, sign up, and uh, I hope I see you there. Thank you, Maxi. All right, Maxi, I'll let you go. And I'm look, looking forward to seeing you and many of the fans during FanFest. And, uh, and and more importantly, it's it's so good to see you. And hopefully we'll see you in person soon again, Maxi. Thank you. See you next week at Gamescom. Bye. Very excited for 12 minutes coming to Xbox Game Pass. And joining me today is the developer, the man, the myth, Luis Antonio. Luis, <laughs> thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me over. I'm really glad to be here. I am so excited to chat with you. I mean, folks that uh, have watched, been following Xbox for a long time, remember a few years ago when your trailer hit the screen uh, during during our, our media briefing one, one year at E3. And it was, you know, for those folks that don't remember, this is, you know, this is a, a beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful game with kind of this top-down, top-down uh, angle that that kind of really took people by surprise and they didn't know what what they were looking at. And I just remember uh, being in the in the audience at this time, and people were like, what is, and here's a little bit of it right here, what is this game? So tell us a little bit about 12 Minutes, if you would. Um, so 12 Minutes, we're, 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 we're pitching it as a, it's an interactive thriller about a man trapped in a time loop. You come home from work, you're having an evening with your wife, and then this, this intruder shows up. He accuses your wife of murder. Um, you get beat up. You get in altercation, you get beat up, and then you go back to the start of the evening. And you have to use the knowledge of what you know is going to happen to kind of try to change the outcome and hopefully break the loop. Now, I we'll talk a little bit about more about the game in a second. But I want to talk about your journey as as a as a game creator and as a developer and as a designer. You've been you've you've worked on quite a few games that people may not be aware that you worked on in the past. So tell us a little bit about your journey, if you would. Uh, yeah, so I started in the industry uh, right after university. I work at Rockstar Games on Manhunt 2, Midnight Club LA, Max Payne 3. Um, then I moved to Ubisoft, where I was art director in a couple of other titles. Uh, eventually, I got a bit fed up with AAA stuff and, and went indie. I joined Jonathan Blow on The Witness, uh, doing the art direction and the art style, and it was a great uh, team effort. And, and that's where I kind of got this... I have this idea I want to do. I'm surrounded by these indies doing their games, and um, and that's then when I I started to work on Twelve Minutes. Now you know in in gaming we have this in the games industry we call this thing the game loop, which is the thing you're doing in the game, whether you're like you're you're playing a first person shooter or a puzzle game. But the, your game loop in this game is is the loop is the time <laughs> loop, right? So it's it's very literal, but it also allows you to be very creative uh, in the way you tell your story as a storyteller. Tell us, tell us how you came up with the idea and how you refined it a little bit. Um, so I, I was fascinated by right, this, this accumulated knowledge. And, and early on, it was just, it's a cool gimmick, right? You see movies and it's just so interesting. And I was like, can I pull off this on, on, as a video game? Um, so first I was exploring the mechanical aspect of it, where you have, you know, you have a door, the door is locked, you get the, the you learn the key code for a door, you can unlock it the next loop, and then it just once once I remove mechanical puzzles to puzzles about people and relationships and how you see these relationships, then I saw there was like something really interesting and it was just digging further into this this concept and see what was captivating and what kept people uh, interested and which eventually arrived at this kind of a theater piece where you're, you're in this apartment with your wife and there's this, this intruder. T tell me about the design, because if you look at the design, the entire game, and I have not finished the game That's yet. It's really I violent. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to give any spoilers. Yeah, this is, it's probably a pretty violent one. But, it, but it's all top down. And so what was, what was your decision like, hey, we want to give folks uh, this top down view. Tell us what that, wh why you approached it like this. Um, the main reason, um, like the reason why I decided to keep it was just that it's um, not only it's kind of iconic and unique, but it's it's very accessible. Um, you kind of have a, a floor plan of, of everything that's happening and you can just 
right? If you can, if you can use a mouse, you can just click where you want to move or same with the gamepad. Um, so we realized it was very accessible for people and without sacrificing any of the design where you, like, if you open the fridge, you're going to go into a first person camera. Right. Um, and I, I kept wondering, maybe I could change the camera, but every time I did, we would lose some of this richness in terms of the way you can so easily access the game. Right. Um, and then it works thematically as you kind of you have this voyeuristic look into this couple and um and it also helps not seeing their faces so you kind of you end up building up from the voice acting plus the the, the animation kind of imagining how their faces look and we don't cross the uncanny valley and and all the technical issues that come with with facial animation you, you talked about the talent and you have some major major <laughs> la hollywood style international talent you've got daisy ridley james mcavoy and willem dafoe i mean that is an incredible trio to have what was it like working with them and how did you explain to them to prep them to bring your characters to life um so yeah totally H having these three incredibly talented actors play these actors uh, these characters i think it just elevated the material we had um the biggest challenge by far was um like we, we showed them that we pitched them the project itself and they were interested but it always came the question of can we look at the script and and that was the big challenge how to convert a non-linear script to a format that they could digest and and understand the characters um but they were awesome. They they they, they liked the premise. They liked the challenge. And once they were on board, it was yeah finding a way to kind of break this whole thing into chunks that they could be able to understand and interpret. Because they they can really bring characters to life. And I think I was I think I remember you telling me, um, you know that that Daisy Daisy does a does an American accent in this one, right? So yes, it's her so first time. Um, first time in no, she, she did a VR game. Um, ah, that's right. A while ago, but it's her first um, American accent uh, role, and it's first James McAvoy video game role too. Yeah, so there, there's a lot of firsts going on here, and and you yeah. know, having access to the talent, and and having them into your characters is this. You know, when you were developing this many years ago and you had this vision, I mean, here you are, because I remember, like I say, when we started off the interview, we talked about you on stage with, um, you know, with Xbox, and that's been. Tell us a little bit about that journey coming along along the Xbox journey. <laughs> Um, I mean, that was amazing. Like that, this was literally like I was, we were wrapping up the witness. I had this concept that whoever I showed it to, they were like, look, you got to work on this. You got to make this happen. Um, and then I was looking, who can I find that can support this? Um, and most publishers, and I looked for over a year were, you know, oh, we like it, but, but do this. And Microsoft was like the idea at Xbox. They were like, look, here's some funding. We trust you. You know, you, you got, you got something cool going on here. Just. Just go on with it and go work on it, it and let us know yeah. when you're done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Literally, literally. It was like, here's some money. We trust you. And and that was huge. That was that's what made the game uh, like make me trust that I could go off and, and you know make this full time and, and make it happen. And uh, yeah, that was that was huge. Um it's also got great because it's part of Xbox uh, Game Pass, so you're gonna have this instant huge audience that you're just going to millions of people that you're just going to plug into that are going to go oh we're going to we're going to there's no reason not to check this out so it's a different type of game so that's got to be exciting for you as a developer as well as to to have game pass there yeah i think i mean i think it's a natural progression to the way we consume media right we have spotify we have netflix and game pass seems like it's a natural evolution of that and, and exactly what you're saying i think a lot of people that maybe wouldn't play this or might not be sure now they can access it and then they can just enjoy it and it can you know snowball and i think this is a game that uh having your friends talk about it and just share the experience it becomes much more interesting like a film and yeah and game pass will, will allow that to happen which is pretty cool you talked about films for just a, a couple times already tell us about some of the inspirations you've had whether it's been point and click games or some some film and linear media tell us about some of the inspirations that that, that that helped you on this journey for 12 minutes um on the game side yeah like the old school uh lucas arts like monkey island the of the tentacle like i grew up with those you know, games you know, and... I, I know tim schaefer i can get him in here if you want <laughs> oh yeah yeah i know he lives in san francisco yeah yeah i've met him a couple of times <laughs> tim schaefer and ron gilbert ron used to live here in the oh, bay area too. that's right uh, that's right so yeah I, I i mean i like i it's funny because i remember when i was thinking about 12 minutes emailing ron gilbert and i never got a reply right but <laughs> but uh <laughs> 
Yeah, there's this. Um, so point and click has this magic of the amount of things you can do, right? right? In a shooter, you're just shooting for like 300 hours, but point and click, you, the way you can communicate is much richer than than usually other mediums. So I wanted to bring some of that into this design. Um, then there are other titles that just as a kid, they had an impact on me and how they felt cinematic, like uh, Jordan Mackner's Prince of Persia, um, uh, Another World from Eric Chai, um, or more recently, like even Lucas Pope Papers, Please. It has this, like where, where the mechanics, the things you do, and the story that's being told are are super connected. There, there's no, you just feel that you're there, and it feels cinematic, and it feels mysterious, and, and I just like that a lot. Uh, and there's not much being told either, right? There's no Prince of Persia. You never said you don't. You have the objective of saving the princess, but you have no idea what that journey is going to be. Right. Right. When, when I was looking at the, when I was looking at the game, we talked about the design a moment ago, but there's very, something very subtle that I, I don't think a lot of people realized. And that is, as we play this video, we watch some of these scenes play out. The scenes are very different based on the lighting. Here, we just saw lighting change. And that really helps the game. And here's, it's much brighter. That's really an interesting uh, mechanism and feature that you use there. Tell us a little bit more about that. Um, yeah. So this comes from, like, I think, the, the side of the film inspiration kind of guided this in the sense of, um, right, I, I want to clearly show there's a progression of time. Right. And so what elements do I have? I have the lighting, I have maybe the, the sound design, doing something with the music, and not only shows the progression of time, but also helps create the mood. So I, I because everything was so compressed, I had to push all the elements to to help convey what's happening in terms of the emotions and the, and what's going on in the loop. As we go through, and we're, it's funny, as I look at, as you and I are chatting here, we're coming up just on 12 minutes of the, long in this interview, so uh, we're, we're gonna start <laughs> over again. No, when, when we talk about the game and some of the puzzles, you have to kind of figure it out as you're going through the time loop. If somebody gets stuck in a puzzle, I mean, what are what, what should they do if they can't figure something out? I mean, I don't want any spoilers, but can you kind of, kind uh, of guide me a little bit here? Yeah, I mean, um, so hopefully the game, like the game never straight out tells you what to do. Um, sure. So it's a bit up to you to look at the tools you have, the elements that are there, which aren't that, that many, and kind of formulate a plan. Um, the best advice I have if you get stuck is to uh, take a break, <laughs> <laughs> talk with a friend about it if they're playing, or just kind of like the game flows really well if you have a clear goal in mind. Let's say I want to prove to the wife that I'm leaving the same day. Right. Right. What elements do I have to prove that I'm living the same day versus I have a mug with water? What, how should I use it? Right. So thinking on a larger scale of what are your own personal goals versus um, how can the elements I have in the game unlock more things? Um, right. So I would, yeah, I would suggest look at it on that scale. And usually the characters, they kind of nudge you in the right direction a couple of times or, or, or they might hint at certain things. Um, yeah. Well, it's, yeah. I know I know that folks, like I say, a lot of people are really excited about it. If you're on Game Pass, download this right now. Check it out. You 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 owe yourself a great experience. I really, really uh, want to congratulate Luis on shipping the game. I know it's been a journey for you, and thank you for bringing Xbox along on your journey. And I know that <laughs> Xbox gamers are going to be very excited to play it. So thanks again for your time, Luis. And again, congratulations on shipping the game. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. It's great to be here, Larry. And then, yeah, I hope people enjoy the game. It's Look at it like a mini series. You have three episodes or four episodes. You watch them at, in the evening with your with your partner, and just you're gonna have a blast. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks to our interview guests this week. A lot of fun news, and especially Fan Fest taking place this weekend. So our first piece of news this week is around the Xbox Stereo headset, which is. <laughs> This is what I have these. What? Ready? You still got them on. What? Uh, Let's right. bring it up here. So, here we go. This is, it's this little guy right here. Look at that. Now, just what, this Larry, why don't you do the, the unboxing part and, you know, Rebecca, you can tell us all about it. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Great. All right. So as you can see with our model here, we have the Xbox stereo headset, <laughs> which is available for pre-order as of Friday. Um, it's going to be releasing September 21st. And I think in particular, this is great for the folks who are looking for something that's high quality, but like at a lower price point. Um, and so it's a really good entry level option. If you haven't had a gaming headset before, this would be a good one to try it out. 
um, has a lot of the same features as some of the other headsets, but it is wired. Um, and then the right ear cup dial, <laughs> as our guests will, our model will demonstrate, is the volume uh, volume dial. So there you go. You can kind of you can yeah. kind of see it in here. If you look, you can kind of see the volume dial, and and as and you can see that the, nice. there's the uh, the boom mic here is folds up out of your way. You can kind of bring it down if you want to, or fold it up. Um, the one nice. thing that uh, and there's a mute on the bottom, of course, because you got to have that. You can see, I don't know if you can see that <laughs> on the bottom there. And yeah, yeah, we see. Yeah. It. And then the cord is in this beautiful Xbox green, I guess it is. But this is, you know, this is very similar to the one we announced a few months ago. Uh, Jeff, do you have yours available, or Rebecca, do you have yours available? I actually do because yeah. I use it every day, uh, yeah. right over here. Let me, let me let me bring you up full screen so you can kind of see that. So yeah, so that's the this wireless. The that's its that's its uh, uh, sibling, the 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 wireless version of this. And this is the wired version. So it's as as Rebecca said, it's 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 a little bit less, it's a little more affordable. Um, and of course, all of the Xbox controllers, if you forget, I'll I'll flex my new controller here, have that wireless port right here on the bottom. So you can just plug it in there and then you're good to go. So if you want to get a headset that's a little more affordable, but you wanna you like the look and the feel of this thing and the flexibility, Jeff, you and I have been using this for or quite some, Rebecca, I'll have to get you one of these. Um, yeah, you and I have been. Using There's the price element, but I will say there are certain folks who, in their house, like if they've got their modem and their router in the same room where they're doing gaming, there can be a lot of like interference in in a particular room. And some people, you know, prefer a wired solution. Don't forget, it's just wired into the controller. It's not doesn't have to reach across the room, yeah. you know, and plug into your Xbox or something like that. So it really just needs to reach from here to where your hands are. Um, I would say the other part of it is um, I love my wireless headset, but, you know, I do have to think about battery life. And that's something you don't have to really think about with a wired solution. You can just you can just plug it right in and it goes and it runs off the juice in your controller. So, they, so uh, I think so a lot of there's some there's definite advantages and there's times where I'm thinking I, I would like to pick one of those up as well. And that'll be available. Uh, it's, it's available to pre-order now, right, Rebecca? We've signed this pre and then it's, yes. it ships next month, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And uh, and so just for the price for folks who are curious, it is available for fifty nine ninety nine. US September 59. 21st. Yep. US fifty nine yep. bucks. So there you go. That's that's. That's the reason I had the gloves on this time. So what else, uh, Jeff? You got some other news there. Thank you for that, Rebecca. Thank you for 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 narrating my uh, my showing and telling unboxing. You, I was showing you were telling. Now, Jeff, what do you got for news? I love it when Larry is seen and not heard. It's That's just it's just a, re it's just a <laughs> refreshing break. So it's the middle of the month, and of course that means uh, Megan McGame Pass uh, always wants to come and drop. Some new things down the chimney. I'm very much mixing my metaphors here, but there's more games, so who cares? Let's just go with it. So, uh, some new games, uh, including this week, uh, 12 minutes. Yes. This one really uh, kind of jumped, uh, caught me off guard. We announced it, I think, late last week. Was Humankind? So, this is a game uh, that is very much in the mold. If you're a Civ fan, this is something you're definitely going to check out. It's for if it's for PC. So, if you have Xbox Game Pass for PC or uh, Ultimate, you'll be able to access this one. This is a, a 4X game, one of those strategic games. You're definitely going to want to be playing it on a. I've downloaded it on my gaming PC. I've carved out some time for the weekend. I will say that no game more than Civ has ever been one where, holy crap, how's it four in the morning? And I started playing like right after dinner. And so uh, picking up some of these vibes from Humankind, definitely want to put more time into it, but really excited about this. If we go back to those sort of that era of me staying up till four in the morning playing Civ 2, there was a game called Mist. Do you remember Mist? I, of course. Uh, do I remember Mist? It's very much a 90s thing. Um, uh, do, you, and, do you know the <laughs> significance of Mist? Mm -mm. Please it, tell us. Larry. It is one of the educate me, please. It was one of the killer apps for CD-ROMs. You had to have a CD-ROM to play it. And that's what a lot of people don't remember. I'm gonna look it up. And not only that, but it was one of the more um, so. Like now, what, what's the game that everybody would use for to test out their their graphics cards? I know some people use Forza Horizon. Some people use. Um, uh, Doom Eternal is a great way to say like how many frames per second. Mist was like the highest end game in terms of visuals when it came out in in the 90s. I couldn't run it. I couldn't play it. But it is out now for Xbox uh, in Xbox Game Pass for console and for PC and for cloud. And it's um, 
not an action game. You, you're, you're figuring out puzzles uh, out of like very detailed uh, visuals. But this is not just, let's just skin the old game and, and, and throw it on there. It's actually been, it's been redone or reimagined. And so I'm really excited to check this out. It comes out on August 26th. Again, part of Game Pass. And I'm going to be able to, now I have something, a computer and a console that can run Myst, uh, Myst 2021. And so really interested to play just a low key game. Maybe if I'm coming down off of playing a super intense round of uh, Hades, uh, very excited for that. And of course, we have to talk about the game coming up next week. We've been very excited for 15 years, 16 years in the making, Psychonauts 2 coming to Xbox Game Pass for console, for PC, and uh, and, and even the other platforms as well. Uh, so very excited. August 26th. I'm right. sorry, August 25th is when we get to play that Ooh. from Double Fine. It's finally here. So That's soon. exciting. Yeah, it's, it's soon. It's here. So it's we'll be talking, I'm sure, a ton about it. <laughs> very good. Very good. Uh, I'm, I know we'll be talking about that a lot more next week. Um, but one last thing I'm going to talk about that I didn't really call out on the last show, but is beginning a lot of conversation uh, in the past week is a game called Boyfriend Dungeon. And uh, and it's a game, I did watch the trailer based on a lot of people talking about it, where it's like a dungeon slasher game, but like your weapons turn into people and then you date them afterwards. So it's part dungeon crawler and then part dating sim. And look, you either, when I said that, you either said, what the hell, no, or you said, I'm downloading now. So uh, my job here is done. It's part of Xbox Game Pass, again, for, for uh, console, PC, and for cloud. <clears throat> Check it out or don't. But I know a lot of people are talking about it. It seems really Sounds interesting. Sounds amazing. Uh, you, need to, you need to check it out. That's that's all that yes. Jeff's saying. So, <clears throat> and if you're a Game exactly. Pass subscriber, and why aren't you? Then this is a this is a no brainer to take it for a test drive. And that that's this, the amazing thing about Game Pass. We talked about roguelike, and maybe a roguelike is not for you. You thought it was not for you. Try it out. Try out Hades. Try out a number of other ones that are on the on the platform. Uh, Boyfriend Dungeon. I mean, maybe you can just date it a little bit. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to make it official. You don't have to define that relationship. Keep it casual. Keep it it could just be like Keep dating dungeon or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the way, uh, roguelike sounds is, like my life. Roguelike. Oh my. Dating. Better. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> have you tried dating a uh, a large like a scimitar or something? I mean, are you are you confining yourself to humans, or have you thought about weapons that can personify humanoids? Themselves? Humanoids, Cylons, you know. Larry's very like uncomfortable. No, 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 not at all. Just, <laughs> the faces you're making are faces you've never made on this show before. Well, I, that's that's just, <laughs> we're we're new territory now. So, <clears throat> what other news is there this week? <laughs> Close that. Yeah, uh, real quickly, I wanted to talk. So we talked about Gamescom. So just make sure you tune in 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that'll be next Tuesday on the 24th. Um, it's also QuakeCon. So QuakeCon begins uh, really about the time you're hearing this. It's going to be going on all weekend. So, of course, our good friends at uh, at ID, part of Bethesda, uh, they they run this. QuakeCon's been going on since 1996. Since Mist was the hardest thing for you to run on your on your computer, loved, probably until Quake. Actually, I, I tell uh, you, I loved Mist. I had, I mean, that was I remember playing it on my early mid 90s Mac, and I had to get a CD ROM and the loading, and it was it was just it was a was one of those I games. think mid 90s I was still playing like maybe Frogger on my dad's PC so okay. <laughs> did your did, did they, they redid same... Frogger around that time and and they did a, a, I remember on like the PS1 and so there was I, I'm assuming you were not playing Atari level Frogger still very hard yeah, um, I mean, but yeah. I'm just looking at this oh go on please I was gonna say I assume your dad didn't drag you into an arcade and you were playing at the cabinet <laughs> I mean maybe he <laughs> no, did. my dad now, I, I mean, I did play some arcade games, but yeah, uh, my dad's PC was my first game, like entry to gaming. So, so. maybe he, he may have had a CD-ROM. If he had a CD-ROM, he probably he had might missed, have had missed. Because that, yeah. that was that was the game to play. That and there was, I think there was one from like Peter Gabriel, like an interactive experience and all this CD other ROM. stuff. CD-ROM. There, I haven't heard that in such a long time. <laughs> Go on, Jeffy. I just want to talk about uh, QuakeCon real quick. Don't think it's just about Quake. It's really like a celebration of all things uh, uh, from from Bethesda, and they have a full stream schedule. We have it over on Xbox Wire, but I'm just looking down the line here and uh, starting again on the 19th, but going all the way through Saturday uh, evening. Uh, they're going to be talking Fallout 76, Death Loop, um, Elder Scrolls Online, 
uh, Skyrim 10th anniversary. How has it been 10 anniversary? Um, uh, Doom Eternal. Uh, and so there's just a lot of stuff there. Don't think it's just about Quake. Uh, and so you just go to quakecon.org. You'll be able to see all of that stuff. And I look forward to seeing what our, our good friends and colleagues over at, at Bethesda have planned there. The last thing I want to mention is... Um, like I'm, I'm always, I'm on JRPG duty. Like that's, that's my role here on the show is to make sure not, not a single JRPG goes unnoticed, uh, you know, this, during the this week. This right here, this is the JRPG desk slash room. This is the JRPG <laughs> corner, you know, right here. Come my friends. Uh, and so there's a game coming up uh, from uh, Bandai Namco called Tales of Arise, part of the very long running Tales series. Um, you may have been a Tales of Vesperia fan back in uh, the Xbox 360 days. It was remade for Xbox One. Uh, well, Tales of Arise is the next big one. It looks really cool. There's a demo, which is available now. So try it out. It's on Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S. The final game comes out in September. It is September, I want to say September 9th. September right. 9th, which I'll always remember. As the day the Dreamcast came out, nine nine ninety nine. Nine nine. That was heck of a day. Peter heck Moore and I had lots of child conversations about that. Yes, Back and uh, Black Panther is now in Avengers with the War of Wakanda expansion, which is now available and it's free. So if you uh, had Avengers and you want some new content, a bunch of that out available now. Back to you, Larry. Well, no, it's back to us. Rebecca and I are just sitting over here. You're, 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 you're in the you're JRPG and out over there, and and other <laughs> things. To be clear, I uh, yes, we got the neon. You were complaining about my lighting, and so we got that. We got that sorted. It looks like you've got some lighting there too, Larry. I've got a, I've got a little bit. I mean, you've got the green in the back. I've got the green in the back. You can kind of see it uh, over here, Rebecca. We're Look gonna have to work accent. Over. We're gonna have to get. Some I'll see what I can you. do for next week. Yeah, we're, it's just something going on there. You know, it's funny. We, you know, if you follow us on Twitter, uh, both. Uh, you know, I know that you follow some of us on Twitter. Uh, you can follow us right there. It's on screen right now. But uh, Jeff, I went over to Jeff's house this past uh, weekend. Rebecca, we missed you because you were, you know, you were busy uh-huh. traveling. But Jeff, uh, I, I, I feel good. I, are you feeling good about what we did over there in terms of the install? Yeah. So, you know, I ended up tweeting about this and got like more comments than much more than normal, which was we talked about networking. Now you're always here. I'm always complaining. You're like, you know, you need, we need a mesh network. And I'm like, look, Larry, I've been interneting for some time and we don't need all that crap. Okay. It'll be fine. But I let you come in here and put in all that crap and okay, it runs really well. And I'm, <laughs> I've, it's never run better. I'll, I'll admit it. And uh, you can have that. So why don't you talk about like, <laughs> networking and like how you can make oh, it better no, so i'd love for well, you to just talk about what you did because it, it did yeah, make a difference us. i think i was running super old stuff i was running yeah, you, really old well you you live um, in a you live in a uh, i think it's it's a four-story house right you say four stories a three it's three yeah it's very vertical it's like a townhouse and, uh, and, and as you walk in at the bottom is is where your internet came in where the cable modem in and that's where the you had one router most people just have one router Yep. Um, and so, you know, you're up on the third floor, you're, you were expecting to get, you know, it's tough to get up three floors through three floors or two floors of stuff. So we put in a mesh network. I've done a lot of work with the Eero system, E-E-R-O, get Eero. Um, and they, uh, and so I had some, cause I've upgraded mine and they, I had some extras. So I had them send me some for you, Jeff, cause I wanted to do a test for you. So we went Thank you. Thank you, Larry slash Eero. I showed up with a bag of gear rebecca and we we ripped out jeff's system and put in the euro system and he's a part of it of the mesh is do you know how mesh works rebecca or how it works it's basically just i don't know just imagine a mesh and it's you know the waves are coming through and all of a sudden it's fast just leave it that um but it's it's we had uh we we did a wired backhaul up to the third floor and mesh on the second and then wired on the first and so we just went through and tweaked some things and now the good news is Jeff's getting great speeds. The bad news is using a lot of the tools to to keep his daughter offline, right? right there was some other stuff, and I was like, "Yeah, I made it so you know she, her, she loses internet on her devices at eleven at night, which I think is pretty reasonable." That's Am I my bad? Yeah. Uh, and and so like the first night we did it, like eleven oh five, she comes. I'm playing Hades, and she comes in. She's like, "The internet's broken." I'm like, "Sure is, honey. Sure is. <laughs> good night." <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know you. Then, yeah, that's great. Yeah, she definitely. But then the next morning, she was like very worried about it. I think she had a fitful night of sleep, and I had to tell her, "You just internet is off from eleven to seven from now on." And after getting some pretty like legit death stares, uh, she's adapted. Oh so, no! Um, oh no! I think it's good. 
Oh, no, it's good. You no, have to do she's it. She's going to hate kids me. Will do that to you. Because she knows that I'm not the system. <laughs> it's no, no it's all never, dad. Yeah. She never liked you, Larry. It's, it's you're not losing anything. So I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, I, I did not now. invoke your name and use your name in vain. Um, yeah, I just, it was my call. And uh, look, you got to do it. You got to put some limits. And I don't feel like, I feel like maybe I'm not doing enough, you know? But anyway, the, the, the takeaway of this is, um, you know, if, if you haven't upgraded your home network in a while, depending upon what it is, a mesh may or may not work. I don't know. But it's good to, good to look at that every now and then and kind of reset what you're doing. And because technology's changed in 15 years. I don't know when was the last time you changed yeah. your wireless router. How's your, how's your internet there in, in, in New York, Rebecca? I mean, clearly it's working because we can see you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty small apartment, so the signal's nice and strong. <laughs> well, that's that's actually one of the problems is when you get into an you know an apartment complex like you have, the signals ni- signals nice and strong, but it also is noisy because your neighbors also have access points. So there's mm. a, just being mm. in the city, there's a lot of there's a lot of competing stuff. And I showed Jeff there's this great application you can download um, for Android and Apple called Wi-Fi Man. It's from Ubiquity. Mm. And Jeff and I, Jeff downloaded and I downloaded it and you can use it to kind of see, you know, do speed tests and performance and all sorts of other things. So it's interesting. Yeah. So go ahead and download that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for all the, thanks for all the tips there. Yeah. Look at, look at you, Jeff. That's wireless. Look at these beautiful numbers. That's Wi Fi Man, right? That's that's Wi Fi Man. That's all that's Wi Fi Man and the Nero. It's all sorts of but anyway. Yeah, if you have any questions on that, you can hit me up and I'll I'll hit me up on Twitter. I'll help you help you out. Yeah. <sighs> All right, gang. I guess I should let y'all go and get your get your day started. <laughs> Lucky's uh, over. Yeah, I yeah. got I gotta go to my next class. Yeah, I know. We're all done here, Rebecca. It's good to have you back on the show after a couple week hiatus, as we say in the business. Thank I, you. It's I nice to be back. I'm excited to play Aliens. We're gonna be back. Yeah, well, I'll send you the code after the show. We're gonna be back next week with the show, and then I think we're off the ne- following week, first week of September, because I, I need to. Because you guys take time off, I never get to take time off because I've got to do the show. You really don't take annual leave. You're yeah, the anti Graham. Yeah, yeah, I need to. I need so I. We, we may we may not have <laughs> a show or two, so we'll figure. I mean, I'm welcome to. You guys are welcome to do the show without me. Just saying. Can you just like There's leave your leave your set on, and I'll just come over your house. I'll sneak in through that window. And then we'll run the show. We'll push the button. <laughs> push the button. Yeah. And something push will happen. The we'll see what happens. See what we'll happens. Be in yeah. oh boy. Anyway. All right, gang. Any final words before we uh, wrap up here? Rebecca, anything you want to say before we go? <laughs> no, all good. Thanks. Oh. Nice to be back. All right, Jeffrey, anything? Play Hades. It's really good. Play Hades. All right, gang. All right, everybody. We'll see you next week uh, with even more news, more Game Pass information. Don't forget, we've got our Gamescom stream on Tuesday. So tune in and watch. And we've got uh, looking forward to seeing what you think of that show. Talk to you next week, everybody. Bye-bye.